In this video, I'd like to show you some scripts I've been working on that add more options to the MIA material within Maya. You see here I have a MIA Material X, and with a fresh install of Maya, if you come up to Presets, you'll have all these included, from Chrome down to Water. Now all the stuff below is the stuff I've been working on, I'll show you in a minute. But uh, how the basic presets work are, if I select Chrome, Replace, it will just go through all the attributes of the MIA Material X and adjust them till it has this Chrome looking material. And that's fine, but uh, there are no presets that will add new uh, nodes to the network or textures, so there's not going to be anything for uh, wood or a concrete or anything like that. And if you've ever used uh, 3ds Max, you may have noticed that the Arc and Design material, which is the same thing as the MIA Material X in Maya, you probably noticed that this also has presets. But it has other presets that have uh, textures with it, like this glossy varnished wood, for example. If I select that, it's going to create new nodes, and it'll plug them into this material. Maya does not do that. But the scripts I've been working on will. For example, we can choose a uh, wood bamboo glossy. Say replace. And that's going to create a nice looking material here. And here is a uh, list of renders that goes through each of the uh, preset materials I've made so far. There's a brushed metal, uh, bricks material. This one is actually creating some displacement nodes as well, if you look closely. There's tiles. Uh, this is an ocean shader. This is not really a good environment for this to <laughs> be, but you get the idea. There's a uh, leather and this sort of patterned copper. A uh, smooth concrete, a rough concrete, a, uh, a matte patterned wood, and a glossy version of the same thing. Then we have a matte bamboo floor and a glossy version of the same thing. So how these work is, uh, let's take a look at it in the node editor. Right now, we're just going to take a look at what the material that's currently assigned here. And so here's, here's our material. And I can change the preset. So let's just choose bricks, for example. And now what it's done, it's gone through and removed everything and replaced it with everything that's part of the bricks preset. So it's one thing to be aware of if you're using the presets. If you change to a different preset, any node that's here is going to be deleted and then replaced with the new preset. So if uh, you have made your own adjustments to some of these and you want to save it, just make sure you disconnect uh, whatever nodes you want to keep from the material before you change the preset, otherwise you're going to lose it. Another thing to be aware of, if you are using the bricks preset, like I said earlier, it uses a displacement map right here. And in my how the displacement works is um, the displacement node actually gets plugged into the shading group, not the material. So what that means is if this material is plugged into more than one shading group, then the script is not going to know where to put the displacement node. In that case, it's going to give you a message down here saying that uh, this material is connected to more than one shading group, so it didn't make the connection. You have to manually put it on whatever the proper shading group is. Most of the time that won't be a problem, except there is a bug in Maya where if I were to uh, assign a new material to my object via this method where I right click the object in the viewport and say assign new material, if I were to click on MIA material X here, it's going to create two shading groups and that's, that's just a bug. You see right here it made two shading groups for the one material. So if I try to apply the bricks preset to this material, it's going to give this warning down here. You have to manually make the connection. And so here's our displacement shader. You see it's not plugged into anything. So we need to come over here and delete the extra shading group. This is the one we really want and plug it in that way. But if I were to create an MIA material from within the node editor, then it only makes one shading group. So that's just a bug in Maya to be aware of. 
and you'll see that there are gamma nodes in the node network which are very useful if you're going to be using any kind of exposure control for your camera and if you're using uh, photometric lights that use a inverse square decay you're going to want to use uh, gamma correction so these are included in the network you'll see there's a this is my uh, color texture here and there's a gamma node for that but up here for our bump texture there's no gamma node most of the time you're not going to need a gamma correction on a bump file but uh, depending on how your linear workflow is set up you may have Maya configured in some way to apply gamma correction to any texture map in which case maybe you do want to have a gamma node used here so we can do that with the scripts here is bricks.mel that's the script we're using here right now if we're to open it up you'll see right towards the top this gamma section here and gamma bump yes is equal to zero if I change this to a one let's go back into Maya and run the preset one more time and there we go now this time it's created a gamma node for the bump and it defaults to one which is no change but in the scripts we have control over that too you see right here we have the default value for uh, gamma nodes applied to color textures and gamma nodes applied to bump textures in most cases you're probably going to want to change it to 0.45 which is going to be the the correction you're going to need if you're using a 2.2 gamma uh, in your frame buffer or if you're adjusting incoming bitmaps so we can change it to 0.45 in here as well same thing with our color texture so now it's going to appear correct in our render if we're using an exposure control so you can download the scripts from my website and it's called MIA Cocktail so when you download that you'll get a zip file which comes with these folders and this folder here architectural material textures that contains all the bitmaps that's gonna go into your um, C program files Autodesk folder and uh, that's the default location you can change that but just make sure if you do you come into each of the script files and update this line right here to wherever it is that you want to put the bitmaps I just chose this directory because it's safe if you uninstall Maya it's not gonna this this folder will still exist you won't there's no risk of losing it and these two folders the material X and material X passes these are gonna go into your presets folder which is in your my documents so you go to my documents Maya 2013 or whatever version you're using presets ATTR presets and then put the folders right in here if you already have those folders in there then you can just uh, copy and paste the contents into the folders the contents of the new files here and of course there's instructions here so you don't need to take note of what I'm saying right now everything you need to know is in here so that's it I hope uh, you can give these a try and if you run into any problems let me know uh, I've done a, a few rounds of bug fixes with them so far and uh, it seems to be working pretty good I'm pretty excited about it and I should probably show you where on my website you can find the download so here's my website it's uh, www.vraphix.com graphics click on this link here for Mel scripts and that'll take you to this page here it is right here MIA cocktail and just click download version says 1.2 that's the latest version and then you're ready to go